today, I'm really excited to talk to you about the idea of demystifying meditation. I know this is something that had plagued me for a while until I really figured out what was going to work best for me. And these few things really kind of clicked for me and allowed me to move forward in my own practice. So we're going to talk about three simple steps to demystifying meditation today. Now this may, uh, this class may be geared towards more of a beginning meditator, but I hope that even the most experienced meditator can catch something that may be a little different, um, posed a little differently than they've heard before or experienced differently. So I hope that everybody can get a little something out of this class today. So what if I told you that you were already meditating, right? That, I think, was the hardest block for me to get over. So what exactly do we mean by meditation, right? It's not always what we see in TV and movies, sitting cross-legged, right, with our hands in a mudra, saying the word om, with incense all around, right? It's not always that. So Sarah McLean, describes in her seed meditation that seed meditation method that meditation is a a technique for quieting the mind and nervous system b a practice for cultivation in an expanded state of non-judgmental awareness and c a natural state of deep rest so i'd like you to think about what activities that you're already doing in your day-to-day -day life that bring these feelings for you. Because again, meditation is so much deeper than we consider it to be. I'd like you to think of the word meditation akin to the word sports. Now bear with me, I know that's a lot to handle, right? You're thinking, how in the world is meditation like sports, right? There's absolutely no way. I'm gonna level with you for a second, right? Sports encompasses a whole bunch of different activities right? So we have football, we have soccer, we have baseball, we have swimming, we have rhythm gymnastics, skateboarding, snowboarding, skiing, right? All of these things. I could go on ad nauseum because there are so many types of sports, right? In every country, there are sports that are popular. Sports, 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 right? It's the same thing with meditation. So when we think about different sports may be requiring different aspects, right? For example, baseball requires you to run, requires you to hit a ball, it requires you to throw, right? So these are all different aspects. The same can be said about meditation, right? We're doing meditation for different purposes. There are some people who are doing meditation for the pure stress relief. There are some people who are doing meditation for the body awareness. There are so many different types of meditation that we may not even consider them all meditation. Different meditations do different things. Of course, we know that. We can balance our chakras with the meditation. We can ground with the meditation. We can clear with the meditation. So many different ways we can use meditation. We can meet our spirit guides through meditation. We can hold court with our higher consciousness, our higher self, right? So there's so many different applications of this word. So once we start taking all of that in, that allows us to rewrite how we process that term and that phrase. So if we're concerned, oh, how do we meditate? How does that, how does that look to me? I can't meditate because I can't do X, Y, and Z because my friend, you know, goes to all these different universes and is, you know, flying through air. No. <laughs> Meditation is a highly, highly, highly personal concept. You know, the other thing I want to bring up when we're talking about sports and meditation is that different muscles are built by, different, by doing different sports. So running, for example, that's really great for your legs. Biking, also great for your legs. Um, swimming, however, is more of a full body exercise, right? You're toning all the muscles in your body. So again, just like meditation, there are going to be different aspects where you can hone different skill sets and apply them to other things. Just because I may bike now doesn't mean I can't learn to run later, 
doesn't mean one day I won't do an Ironman, right? We use these skills to build up to greater, greater experiences. That being said, I'd like to get to the three things that you need to meditate. The first thing that you really need to meditate is your willingness. You have to want to do it. Just like anything else, nobody can force you. It has to be a decision within you. You have to want the experience. You have to um, have, the, have the space, right, the personal space, the time, and the effort put into it so that um, your energy can do what it needs to do in terms of meditation. So again, your willingness, you have to want to do it. The second thing that you need to meditate is your attention. So I'd like to do a simple exercise just to show you the type of attention that I'd like you to bring to your meditation. So first thing I'd like you to do is take a nice big deep breath in and exhale. <sighs> One more big deep breath in and exhale. <sighs> now I'd like you to bring your gentle awareness to your left hand. Just go ahead and experience whatever that means to you. Gentle awareness, the left hand. Now I'd like you to bring your gentle awareness to your right hand. Now I'd like you to bring your gentle awareness to your right foot. And finally, I'd like you to bring your gentle and non-judgmental awareness to your left foot. So those of you who are watching live with me, if you would mind, I'd love for you to comment and let me know some of what you just experienced. Oftentimes when we do this exercise, people experience either sensations of heat, cold, tingling, numbness, or just the actual presence of feeling their hand. So whatever experience, oh, Stephanie is saying my hands and feet are tingling, right. So that's the gentle awareness that we're asking to bring when we're doing meditation. That's wonderful. Fantastic. So that was the second point, our attention. Again, doesn't take a whole lot. Doesn't need to be a whole big, you know, sit down and cross-legged position. Oh, gentle, beautiful awareness. And the third thing you need to meditate is a focus for your attention. You have to give your mind something to do because you can't shut it off. Let's be real. We need our brains. We just can't shut them off. We need them to pump blood. We need them to breathe. We need them to make sure that our body is completing the natural progression that our organs do every time we breathe, every time our heart pumps blood. So shutting your mind off really isn't the best um, idea to look towards when you are meditating. So having a focus for your attention, which again is what we spoke about. We can ground, we can maintain our energy, we can clear our energy, we can balance our chakras, we can meet with our spirit guides, our higher self, um, so many different types of meditation. One of my favorites is a forgiveness meditation, a meta meditation. So there are so many different options of things we can do, so many ways we can bring our focus and our attention in. So again, those three things were our willingness, our attention, and the focus for our attention. Now I'm gonna give you five tips that have really helped me with my meditation practice that I'd like to share with you. Again, these are very simple tips. However, sometimes we need to be reminded of the simplest things. 
it's okay to think. Remember, we can't shut off our brain. We need it. We need to nurture and honor it. So don't go into a meditation thinking, oh, I have to clear out all of my thoughts. I have to have a blank slate. No, it's okay to think. It's natural to think. Second, don't try too hard, right? Just like we did in the practice exercise, gentle awareness. Gentle awareness is going to allow us to have the experience that we need to have. I think so often we get caught up in number three, actually the expectations of what we think meditation should be. So the third point I'd like to bring up is to release expectations. Just because we've heard somebody talk about the fact that they may see colors, they may see energy, they may hear things, they may feel things. Sometimes we internalize that and we expect, oh, well, I've been meditating this long and doing such and such and such exercise, so I should be able to see X, Y, and Z. However, that limits us. That boxes us in because then we are looking for those specific points. So by releasing our expectation, that allows us to really take in the full experience to the greatest extent that we can. Number four, be kind to yourself. If this is the most important thing that we talk about today, please be kind to yourself. Do not judge yourself because you are not where you think you should be. If you were where you should be, or I'm sorry, if you were there, you should be there, right? We need to honor where we are in every single moment and we need to understand everything happens in the most perfect timing, even when we don't understand it. So when we are kind to ourselves, that allows us the grace to flow with the energy. We have to be kind to ourselves if we are going to be kind to others. So again, be kind to yourself. Don't let yourself get caught up in the idea that you should be having full-on conversations, if that is what you're going towards. Understand it's wonderful to have a goal, um, wonderful to work towards these things. That's why we have tools <laughs> like smart goals, and there are certain uh, practices we can put into place. But again, be kind to yourself. Understand this is an ongoing process. Rome was not built in a day, right? These great meditators did not experience nirvana and have all of these experiences three weeks after they started meditating. It takes time. It takes patience. A lot of us, myself included, do not have the most patience, right? So give yourself that grace and the gift of ease that you would give to somebody else. That's another good tip too. Be as kind to yourself as you would be to your best friend. That way, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, <laughs> you are always in a space of love because you would never be nasty to your best friend. You are your own best friend. And five, stick with it. It's a practice. Again, this doesn't happen overnight. You have to build up the muscle, right? Just like we were talking about with exercise. It's so important that if you want to play a sport professionally, even, you know, those of you who have younger kids who may be in a high school level, they practice every single day. There are certain activities, even though it's not fully part of the game, that we have to practice in order to get better, in order to improve ourselves. It's the same with meditation. So honor where you're at. Honor what feels good, honor what feels right to you. Again, to sum up those five tips that we just talked about, it's okay to think, you're gonna think. Just bring your awareness back to your focus, whatever that is, whether it's your breath, whether it's conversation with spirit. Just bring your attention back to focus. Don't try too hard. Release your expectations. Be kind to yourself and stick with it. Again, I just want to reiterate those three simple steps that we talked about to demystify meditation. 
You've got to have your willingness. You've got to have your attention. You've got to have a focus. Start with what you can, right? Rome wasn't built in a day, and don't expect your meditation practice to be either. Find what feels good. Find what works for you. It may take some time for you to find the meditation that feels good, but keep in mind, things like walking, things like running, things like prayer, these are all different types of meditation. However you find that space of flow, that space of zen, that is where you go to meditate. Thank you so much to everybody who joined me today. I look so forward to hearing from you and how you've been able to apply these simple tips to your own meditation practice. Again, I can be reached at www.arielsterling.com. And please feel free to send me a friend request and find me on Facebook. I'd love to interact with you guys. I hope you have a beautiful day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.